versus the Denver Broncos. For the 157th consecutive game, Mile High Stadium in Denver is sold out as the Broncos at 1-1 one one take on the Seattle Seahawks, still looking for their first victory of this 1990 campaign. Fred Rogan along with Todd Christensen. Todd, quickly, the Seahawks need a win today. That's right. They started the season 0-2, and, and they're in danger of going 0-3 for the first time since their inaugural year in the NFL in 1977. Let's set the Seahawks offensive lineup for you. There you see the front line, Heck, Bailey, Fiesel, Millard, and Matt. When you move into the backfield, it's Dave Craig at quarterback, the veteran John L. Williams at one running back, Derek Fenner the other, Blades, Kane, and McNeil. The specialist, and in a passing situation, Chadwick and Scancy check into the ball game. The Bronco defense for you. Up front, it's Powers, Cragen, the rookie Szymanski. The linebackers, a solid crew, Fletcher, Munford, Brooks, and Mecklenburg. Now in a passing situation, Craig and Szymanski and Munford slide out of the ball game and sliding in for the Broncos, Holmes, Montgomery, and Elliott Smith. We'll check the defensive backfield for you in a moment. There it is, Braxton Henderson, two injuries, so Robbins and Corrington are starting for Denver. Second and eight. Benner again, running room to the 40, breaks the tackle. Benner is to midfield and a first down for Seattle. Fred, this is one of the situations where you mentioned at the outset we have a first and ten from midfield. Fenner, over right tackle, back to the 45-yard line again. Ball since. Denver with six defensive backs in. Tommy Kane in motion. It's Williams, first down. John L. Williams banging his way inside the 40-yard line. Tyrone Braxton made the hit. That's an excellent call by Chuck Knox in that situation. You get it for the Seahawks to get something going for them early. On second and nine, Craig with his first pass over the middle to the tight end, McNeil. He's got it, and he's inside the 10-yard line. That was a great touch pass by Dave Craig in that situation. There's number 73, Simon Fletcher, trailing him over the field, and this is a post pattern. No, way. Look at number 73 down the field trying to cover him. There's McNeil. Nice touch pass there by Craig, and really the coverage wasn't that bad after him. Kenner inside the five-yard line. Carl Mecklenburg making the hit. You know, Fred, I'm very surprised at that. At the eight-yard line, they went to their three tight end set. Five yards, they've already used six and a half minutes. Second and four from the four. Benner, touchdown, Seattle. He walked in. Tremendous job on that right side by Millard and Mattis. They opened a great hole. He was untouched. Knew that they were going to try to run the ball. Here you see a good light lead block there on Munford by John L. Williams. Walks in. Nice spike, Derek. Not bad. Derek Fenner, the opening kick, moved down the field and scored to lead the Broncos 7 to nothing. Denver offensive line for the first time this season. This is a healthy group, and number 60, Gerald Perry, has been playing the best football of his career. Of course, when you look deep, you have Elway at quarterback, Sewell and Humphrey at running back, Johnson, Jackson, and Mobley. And when they go into the passing situations, Michael Young, 83, checks into the game. Gets to Bobby Humphrey. Near the 25-yard line before he is stopped by Como. And now we'll check the Seahawks front seven. Jacob Green, Joe Nash, Jeff Bryant is playing for Cortez Kennedy. The Seahawks want to have a veteran in there to play Elway. And now when we go to the spread defense, the Seahawks will send in the nickel Jenkins, Jefferson, and Nesby Glasgow. There's a look at their secondary. Harper Hunter, the rookie black minute. Working out of the shotgun. Three wide receivers in the game. First down, the pass to Ricky Natiel, Broncos first and ten. From the 35. On second down. With time, completes the pass over the middle. Vance Johnson picks up a block and is out of bounds near midfield for a Denver first down. And now a flag on the play, a late hit. Patrick Hunter came over way too late. They had him pushed out of bounds and Patrick Hunter jumped on the pile. That was totally unnecessary that if he'd have gotten Hunter there, instead, here he pulls him out of bounds, and right there he goes to the head. He can call it either way. He's far out of bounds, and he also went to the head. It was a good call by the official. Five. Mel Bratton and Bobby Humphrey at running back. That's Jackson in motion. Humphrey. Still on his 
his feet. Inside the 25-yard line, another Bronco first down. Elway completes the pass and drops immediately as Vance Johnson, not before he picks up another Denver first down. Dwayne Harper had him on the coverage. And the money. So far, so good. You're right. Bobby Humphrey breaks the tackle. Down to the seven-yard line before Rufus Porter puts a lick on him. Bratton in motion. Quick out to Humphrey. Could not elude the grasp of Darren Como. Good play, grabbing him and holding him up. Amazing the gloves that these people are wearing out here on a 70-degree day, no less. Broncos are third and goal. Elway with time. Touchdown! We're even at Mile High Stadium in Denver. Second and eight. Craig loses control of the ball. It's a race with Mecklenburg. Touchdown, Denver! Fortunate gaffe by Dave Craig. They're trying to set up the screen. Derek Fenner let him go. He bumps him and it will just let him go because he wants the screen to come. What happens here is that Craig just loses the handle on the ball and it falls back. And so... The man in the moment, Carl Mecklenburg, making the big play for the Broncos. Well, you know, really it was kind of an accident. I mean, here he comes in and he's <laughs> rushing, but you'll get a chance to see right here. Derek Fenner just bumps him and lets him go because he's going to get a screen pass. Right here, Deb Craig just loses the ball. Now watch what Mecklenburg does. It's 240 pounds versus 190, and he knows what he's going to do. He shoves him completely out of the way to get the ball and roll into the end zone untouched. Great play by Mecklenburg, and you know he's got to be excited because he's saying to all his teammates right now, I'm a scoring machine. <laughs> this on second and nine. Fenner, the ball carrier. Fenner with running room to the outside. Run out of bounds at the 49-yard line. First down, Seattle. It was Elliott Smith saving the touchdown. Job on the left side, blowing people out. He would get a chance to see that Mecklenburg is blocked well by McNeil. He pushes him to the outside, and there's a big gap there for Fenner, who breaks two tackles, and right there almost goes the distance. But the young player that we just mentioned, Elliott Smith, pushes him out of bounds. Otherwise, it could be a tie ball game. Four wide receivers in the game for the Seahawks. Kane in motion. The pass is complete to Kane, and he's got a first down. You know what happened there? They got a mix-up in the secondary. They never did get anybody over Paul Scanson. At the last minute, the safety, Kip Corrington, came over. Three players that are not starters in their defensive backfield. Fenner is back in the game now. And he pulls his way inside the 35-yard line. Second and five. John L. Williams, room around the right side. Oh, lost the ball and then held onto it. Lucky break for John L. Williams. He bobbled the ball and then he came right back into his arms. Second and eight. 11 minutes and 40 seconds to play in the half. That's Ron Heller in motion. Play action fake. The pass is complete to Williams. And they'll really him out of bounds, just shy of the 10-yard line. 20 to play in the half. It's second and seven. Heller in motion. Fenner inside the five-yard line. It's third and a yard to go. They can make a first down without scoring. Fenner, touchdown. Another terrific lead block by John L. Williams and a good job there by Brian Millard. What good right now? I mean, we talk about Fenner. What about this offensive line? Well, the offensive line is doing a great job. Right there, you see that Millard kicks out and there's nobody there. There's no run support. The secondary, the inexperience of the secondary right now isn't necessarily hurting them in pass coverage. It's hurting them in run support. Offense three times. Once they lost it, twice they moved the length of the field to score. We're tied. Play in the half. Play action for Elway. Over the middle, Johnson has the ball, and he has a first down. Dwayne Harper dropped him. That wasn't the play to have Rufus Porter out. They really needed a pass rush there. 
Vance Johnson is going to run a simple in route, but what's going to happen here is that he's got so much time that Elway waves him across even farther. Look at the time that Elway has to look. He looks left, looks right. Now he sees Johnson says, wait. Okay, now he comes over a little bit farther, and there it is. That's just too much time for Elway to have, you know, to pick apart the secondary, and that's going to be frustrating for Seattle because they're actually in pretty good coverage. 13-yard gain, first and 10 from the 33. Sewell and Humphrey in the backfield behind John Elway. at the 40. One of the reasons they have Steve Sewell in the lineup is for this very reason right here. Last year, Steve Sewell had a 16.6 average per catch, the highest in the league for running backs. Even for the Broncos. Humphrey. Close to the first down. Denver first and 10. Humphrey with the pitch. Picks up a block. Marker comes flying into the pile. I think they're going to call holding in this situation. Clarence K got a good block off the line of scrimmage, and that's a crucial matchup for this game. Holding during the run. Number 88 on the offense. 10 yards from the start of the foul. Still first down. Moving from the 38-yard line. Elway in trouble, and down he goes. Rufus Porter again, Todd. And Rufus Porter beat two people on this situation. They had both Gerald Perry and and I believe it's Mobley in to try to block against him. So the last two plays. Three wide receivers in for the Broncos. Markers on the play. I think Rufus got off a little too quick. Elway is down in the end zone. Now what is the call? He's going to call it a safety, but I think it's going to be a free play. I think that Rufus got off the mark just a little too quick, and he's going to be very disappointed in himself because this is a huge play. get a motion penalty because Porter's going to drive him crazy. All right, I'm 30 21. Here he comes. Elway gets away from him and dumps it off to Sewell. Sewell is stopped at the 45-yard line by Patrick Hunter. The Seahawks swarming over John Elway. You know what? This isn't going to be a first down. They're going to have to punt, but this really shows the tremendous athleticism of John Elway. Brick. Watch out from the backside, just gets it away and completes the pass to Tommy Kane. Kane to the 30-yard line, a Seahawk first down. Elliott Smith on the hit. Elliott Smith may, gave him way too much cushion to that situation. Carl to test this untested secondary. Maybe they're listening. Williams, first down. Simon Fletcher ran him out. Williams, fumble! Still moves! The Broncos have it! Really, this is a physical mistake and one that surprises a lot of people. John L. Williams, for only the sixth time in his career, coughs up the ball. And there it lays. Randy Robbins finally jumps on it for the Broncos. Fred Rogan and Todd Christensen at Mile High Stadium in Denver, Colorado. Mel Bratton. Fumble! Seattle got it back, it appears. No, it looks like the Broncos fell on the ball. Doug Waddell, 67. Well, that was it's a play by Waddell. Bobby Humphrey. Inside the 35-yard line. You spoke of Waddell. His brother Dave Waddell also plays on the Broncos. That's right. And that's the first brother team that I can remember since Miami when the safeties were Glenn and Lyle Blackwood. Two minutes to play in the half. We're tied at 14. At halftime. Here it's third and one. Oh, movement. And a little more than that. Jacob Green. Well, if you're going to jump, really jump. Focus on the field. <laughs> Encroachment by the defense, first down. Red Cashin didn't buy it. And that's unfortunate. Once again, that's a mental error. Nine. Humphrey in motion. Elway, pump fake, long ball. Touchdown. Elway 
is known for his cannon arm, but strange enough, those of you that happen to have watched in the Isuzu quarterback challenge, he actually won the touch contest. And here's an example of it right here. Great touch pass there to Mark Jackson, followed by a pretty weak dance. I don't get it. You're going to penalize that? You know, what was it that Paul Brown used to say? Paul Brown used to say to his, his players, hey, when you score a touchdown, act like you've been there before. It's in 10 from their 37. A minute 47 to play. Craig, 6 for 6 today. Last week he completed his first 14. Four wide receivers in the game for the Seahawks. With time, batted down at the line of scrimmage. The pass is deflected by Jake McCullough. 6'5", 270 pounds in his second year out of Clemson. Jake McCullough knocked it away. And now, and now with a minute 27 on the clock, Denver's got plenty of time to get down and get a score of their own. <laughs> the Philadelphia is in the reins. Here's Bobby Humphrey. Fred, this is a terrific call. And the reason it is is because of the fact that you just mentioned, they have all of their timeouts. They're on their own 33-yard line, plenty of time. For Johnson, he's got it. He's out of bounds at midfield. First down. That's a great throw by John Elway. Vance Johnson runs what's called a comeback route. He looks like he's going to go up the field deep, and then he comes back at around 20 to 25 yards. This is a man that won, I, I believe, at Arizona, ran a 6-1-60. He can run. Mel Bratton inside for tough yardage. You see the clock continuing to run. That's time. 47 seconds and running. It's not a problem. Elway steps up. Got him in. It's Johnson in a first down at the 35-yard line. Melvin Jenkins, Bulldog, and now there's some extracurricular activity, and there's a marker on the play. It's Red Cashin. It'll be a personal foul against the Seahawks, and that is really a mental mistake you don't want to make in this situation. Well, it... With time, got him in. the one yard line time with his quick feet John steps back and looks he's looking right at Sewell in this situation look at that he pumps the ball four times which indicates that's an awful lot of time that he's getting there Jefferson too late down to the one yard line now threatening to go up by two touchdowns it's first and goal from the one 22 seconds to play play action a situation where you have to throw the ball right here he crosses them up on first down and goes right to the air and there's nobody in the flat for melvin bratton if they run the ball they have to use their timeout and mile high stadium the denver broncos taking advantage of seattle turnovers have opened up a 28 to 14 lead over the seahawks now let's go to new york with bob costas at nfl live Welcome back to Mile High Stadium in Denver. Fred Rogan with Todd Christensen getting ready for the second half. You saw the score, and Todd, your impressions of the first half. Well, I think that we'd have a tie score if not for those two crucial turnovers by the Seahawks. The first one, of course, they turned right into a touchdown. And at the end of the half, when they had a chance to go up, they fumbled the ball. Here we get a chance to see the statistics, and you'll see nothing terribly overwhelming. The total yards are almost even, but really the key statistic right there is the turnovers. Those two big turnovers have really contributed to the two touchdown lead that the Broncos have right now. Seahawks doing what they want to do in time of possession, and if they had not turned the ball over twice, it would have been a tie game. Chances here, possibly with a safety blitz, try to disrupt Elway's rhythm, because right now, 13 for 16, obviously his rhythm is right there. Second and seven. Gets it off to Jackson. He's got a first down. And Elway took a shot from the back. Tony Woods came in there and caught him in the back. Pardon me, that's not Elway. Uh, Elway's all right. Well, that's interesting because here in Denver, not once have I ever seen him recorded talking about the First Amendment. Of course, I, I could be wrong. I haven't been in Denver a long time. Is he going to write a column or something here for the Denver Post? No, he's not. First, first Amendment rights? No, no. And he also told me he sang with a group prior to their controversial songs. Well, I haven't heard him, but I'm just going to go out on a limb and say, hey, babe, keep your day job. <laughs> Third and six. Sewell with a juggling act. And now it will depend on the spot of the ball. Just as we predicted, we had a safety blitz in that situation. Coming up, third and seven. A lot of time. 
Yes, complete to Jackson, threading the needle on a first down. Well, Patrick Hunter took a chance there going for the interception when he dove, and he didn't get it. It was an open, open season for Mark Jackson. Great catch there for the first down, and once again, Elway threads the needle. Fifth year out of Nevada, Reno. Here, Elway faces a second and six from the 40-yard line. Tenth play of the drive. Play action. He has time. He's got a man, Clarence Kane. But there are penalty markers on the field. Come to see the field. Tripping number 67 on the offense. Still second down. It was Waddell. To run now after a penalty. And so that's in effect what they're doing is trying to get the clock going. Humphrey. Close to the 40-yard line before Tony Woods makes the play. Otis Armstrong did the trick. Elway gets it off. Sewell makes the play, and he's knocked out of bounds by Robert Blackman. That's a big play by Blackman. He didn't have a man for man. They had a blitz, and he had to come over, and he knocked him out before he could get to the first down. Young checks into the ball game to the near side of the field. Brack goes with three wide receivers, and it's a quick kick. L.A. gets it away and it's into the end zone. Second and ten. Has time. Over the middle, he's got the tight end, McNeil. McNeil picks up a block, and McNeil is down at the 44-yard line. Randy Robbins made the hit, but McNeil picked up a good block. It's not working. 23-yard pick up there, and here is Derek Fenner to the 40-yard line in a Seattle first down. I think that at this point, the Seattle would just be forced to throw two touchdowns down, but they're not. Here he cuts inside, follows his blockers well, and right there, he almost goes the distance. Mecklenburg dives down and gets him, along with number 24. On first and 10, Craig, yes, completion to Brian Blades. He's down at the 29-yard line. Third and seven from the 21. Four wide receivers in the game for the Seahawks. Incomplete to Brian Blades. Simon Fletcher had him defensively, and there was a great deal of pressure on Craig. Beasel the center, kept the holder, Johnson the kicker, 0 for 1 from this distance this year. right on the money so the Seahawks able to put the points on the board defense can hold here they'll have another chance to score before the end of the quarter it'll be interesting to see if they play it conservatively if, or if once again they come with a safety they're not Elway down he goes now he lost the ball are they going to roll him down or a fumble that's the question Joe Nash picked it up Joe Nash has it I don't know if anybody touches it they're going to give it to Seattle Red Cashin has not made a call yet Seattle ball Jeff Bryant forcing the action. Out of the field, Elway sees it's completely clear, and he's going to take off and go, but right there he gets stripped of the ball. And Joe Nash is right in front of it to take it away from him. It's interesting because they both had their arms on it, but Nash was stronger than Elway. Craig, that's Ron Heller in motion. Fenner up the middle. Near the five-yard line. Before Wyman Henderson and Elliott Smith combined to drop it. They're going to measure it to see if he picked up the first down. Needless to say, this is Derek Fenner's first 100-yard game in his career. And, this and less than a yard from the six-yard line. They trail 28-17. Fenner. First down. And stopped. I think they'll mark it at the two. Certainly taking advantage of this in this drive. First and goal. They mark it at the two. into the hands of Heller. Idaho, population 449, makes a big touchdown catch. Right here he's got him all alone, but he can't quite get it up high enough there. And Heller is able to get the deflection. Lucky play for the Seahawks, and those are the sorts of things that only happen to the Broncos here in Mile High. That's right, and if he doesn't deflect that ball, Simon Fletcher's there to bat it away. A play action fake. But here Fenner jumps and can't quite get it. Now Simon Fletcher tips it, and Ron Heller gets it. Now that's a little piece of serendipity that Seattle definitely needed after the two turnovers that they had in the first half. Well, they have to do it. John Elway trots out into the field. When we come back to Mile High Stadium, the Broncos will have the ball. In the quarter, four wide receivers in the game for the Broncos. 
with time. Got a man, it's Mark Jackson. You called it, Todd. First down. Quick out to Vance Johnson. Johnson makes one move and is out of bounds. Turned Patrick Hunter around and picked up extra yardage. Well, that was the play that I had alluded to earlier on the second down. Humphrey into Seattle territory for a first down. All right, let's check their quarter stats. Well, as we look here, at the yards rushing by the Seahawks you would think would be significant, but then again, the Broncos have almost run for 100 as well. I now. On second and 10. Ooh! Blue! Sammy Winder. Hello to Jacob Green. Four wide receivers in for the Broncos on third and 13 from midfield. The pass is deflected at the line, and a flag goes down. Seahawks, four wide receivers in the ball game. Over the middle, complete to Blaze, and a first down Seattle. Robbins and Corrington combining on the stop. On first and ten from the 38. Fetter takes the pitch. Around Bumble! Bumble! What a catch! What a catch! Kip Corrington is an experience now replacing Steve Atwater, but give him his due. He makes two great plays. First, he comes up and he strips the ball. Now, if he doesn't make this great diving catch right there, the ball goes out of bounds and Seattle retains possession. Two great plays on one play by Kip Corrington. All right, big play. 39. Here comes it. They're coming up like they might push the safeties. Why is that a I think they jump. He's got a free play, comes back to the middle. And now a flag, a late hit. Jacob Green got flagged for a late hit. The coaches don't like that at all. He's screaming at Red Cash, and he can't believe it. You have to be cognizant of the fact that these are big plays here on third down. Unless he comes across and throws a punch and just clobbers him, don't call that. I mean, like Jack Lambert used to say, let's take the dresses off the sides. Defense number 26. That penalty is declined. Looking the passer, number 79. That penalty is accepted. First down. Oh, my. And got a chance to see it right there. They jump up. John Elway knows that he has a free play. Now he pivots to the right and escapes Jefferson. And here comes Jacob Green right here. Going for the sack. Now, right there, he's going to call that. Uh, his hands came up in his face. It wasn't necessarily late, but he didn't have to bring his hands up. As a marginal call. You don't agree with the call. Well, again, you know, you have to be cognizant of what's happening out on the field. Third and eight, it's a big play, and the referee has to say to himself, okay, hitting here at mile high. Humphrey. All the way down to the five-yard line. Tack, you know, turnovers have hurt the Seahawks, but penalties, personal fouls have devastated them today. Well, there's games. And now it's first and goal from the five. Quick toss. Mobley. Well, the good news for Denver is he held on. The bad news for Denver, he didn't get in. Well, that was a good play by Terry Wood in that situation. Excuse me, Eugene Robinson to make the tackle. Wooden for the quarterback draw. Shovel pass, touchdown. Flags down. Flag on the field. Illegal downfield, number 60 of the offense. Ten yards, still third down. Elway will work out of the shotgun. Bratton made the reception, but Robert Blackman made sure he didn't get up. Well, once again, out of the hold of Kubiak, 27-yard attempt. He extends the Broncos' lead to seven points. 7.08 to play. Seattle will have the ball when we come back. Derek Lavelle and Chris Warren awaiting the kick of David Treadwell. Warren, two yards deep, will have a run. Warren up the middle. Warren, it's a foot race to midfield. To the 30 and run out of bounds by the kicker. Take another look. Well, here we get a chance to see he's following the edge right there. Someone just goes down on the field. Right in front of him there, Heller gets a good block on Ty Allen, and that springs him to the sidelines right here. It's a foot waste. 
foot race, rather. Wyman Henderson has the angle on him, and of course you're going to see the kicker come over here and shove him out of bounds, or at least attempt to, as he gets stiff-armed there at the 30. But that's a huge play for the Seahawks to set him up three first downs away from a touchdown. That's Ron Heller in motion. Derek Fenner, he's inside. The 25-yard line, Warren Powers on the stop, and you see the clock continuing to run. Second and two. Heller in motion. Fenner. Ooh. Didn't get around the outside, but more importantly, didn't lose the ball. It looked like he was bobbling it for a second. Oh, yeah. This surprises me. Right here, just hand off to John L. Williams because they're spread out. He's got a chance to cut right up the middle and get the two yards. John L. Williams. I don't know. Mark Munford met him in the air. One of the things you do with misdirection, Fred, is you give the defense a chance to pursue. Ooh, boy. A quick count and get it going. Down. Oh, and nearly a touchdown. Michael Brooks made the touchdown saving tackle. Now you see the clock running. Four minutes in regulation. Tommy Kane in motion. He gets it off. Beats the blitz and Kane is down inside the 10-yard line. The clock continues to run. Moving from the 8-yard line. Four wide receivers in for the Seahawks. Craig has time. He's got plays. Now, where will they mark the ball? It's going to be interesting where they mark it. I think this is a very generous spot. It's still short of the first down. I don't know, Todd. Let's see where they mark it. Seven seconds to play in regulation. They're down by a touchdown. Better. Touchdown! <laughs> what a great effort. He looked like the only one to do was dive, and then all of a sudden he says, hey, I've got nothing but air. What a great job by Ron Mattis and Brian Millard on that side. If you go untouched in a situation like that, you are getting some great help from your offensive lineman. They will get a chance to see if they get underneath. And right there, good kick out block right there by McNeil. There's nobody there. Mecklenburg on the ground. Touchdown Fenner. High step up. And, you know, talk about keeping your balance. It's so easy to dive forward. He stayed on his feet, and that's why he was able to turn it into six. And strangely enough, being 6'3 helped him there because he had that extra upper body to keep him airborne. Johnson with the extra point out of the high snap, but Kemp got the ball down. And with two minutes and 47 seconds to play, thanks to the work of Derek Fenner, the Seahawks and Broncos are tied at 31. Derek Fenner, you know, it's funny how you talk about coming of age. Look at this, 19 carries, 128 yards and three touchdowns. The very thing we talked about with him was whether or not he was going to be the guy to take Kurt Warner's place. Right here you see a great, a good lead block there. Right there, Brooks has him in the hole, but he's able to escape, almost wow. like a ballet-like move. Very Barishnikov there because he gave Brooks nothing to hit except for his thigh pads. Second and eight from the 24, 2.32 to play in regulation. And Elway completes the pass to Vance Johnson, who turns it up on Hunter. Oh, my. Hunter grabbed him. One more step, and that would have been it. Roundings, the Denver Broncos here, as you can indicate, 60 and 16 under Reeves and Mile High Stadium, nearly an 80% winning percentage. That is the highest in the NFL. Two from 40 to 49 yards. Elway on second and seven. Out to Bratton, who slips and is dropped short of the first down. Well, both Bratton and the defender slipped in that situation. Nesby Glasgow went down, and if Bratton could have kept his feet, he would have had a big gainer. Or got his shotgun. it off for Sewell. He makes the grab, but does he get the first down? Well, once again, John Elway did himself a disservice there by not planting his feet, taking the hit, and throwing it hard. This year, he's two for two. His longest this season is only 44 yards, so this is going to be quite a kick if he's able to come up with it. Kubiak's the holder. Does it have enough? No! Here's a crucial situation here too, Fred, and that is that they're going to get the ball there on the 33-yard line. You know, as this place is rocking, four wide receivers in for the Seahawks. 
John L. Williams breaks a tackle over the 45-yard line. Clock. Craig does stopped. a good job right there of getting right to Red Cashin and saving the seconds. Speculation. First and ten. Craig rolling out for Blake. Yes, they call it a catch. He's in bounds. Dan Reeves is going to argue that, but not too vociferously. Apparently, Blaze is able to get both feet in bounds. Hey. Complete again and out of bounds. Paul Scancy going up to make the grab, and he's forced out of bounds to stop the clock with 19 seconds left. And he beats Alton Montgomery on this situation. He was also able to save a timeout. If they could have tackled him, tackled him in the middle of the field, they would have had to use their timeout. And he's got to be a little bit disgruntled. But here, here, I don't like this play. I don't think the 44-yard field goal is a gimme. I think they have to get a few more yards. And Fenner just bangs his way forward. The clock is running. You see it. They just tried to move it into the middle of the field. And Red Cashin has just stopped the clock make any sense to me Fred you've got to have a situation where you've got to get a few more yards and there's movement on the line and a flag oh no oh that's going to be a costly mistake if that's against Seattle 49 yard field goal is monumental just as the difference between say a 44 and a 39 yard field goal is monumental and apparently as indicated by the Seattle Seahawks players it is against the Broncos see we weren't able to make out the number I believe it was Cragen So Johnson picks up five yards. He missed it. It's off to the side. That's just got to drive Chuck Knox crazy. in the short period of time, get back out there and play overtime. And this is one of the strange things about overtime in professional football. One of the crucial plays of the overtime occurs right here, and that is the coin flip. And something like, I believe it's over 60% of the coin flips, the team that receives ends up winning the game. Who's going to call the call? You call it, please call it in the air. We call heads. Heads it is. Which end do you want to defend? One to toss, toss to receive. Three minutes. The Seahawks have another opportunity, and we'll be right back after these messages from your local station. Overtime at Mile High Stadium in Denver. Outside for Brian Blades and Emmett Smith. Heller again in motion. Play action. He avoids Fletcher and takes off. Short of the first down. Williams. It's awfully close. I think he got it. So does Chuck Knox. It's interesting how, though, if you ever watch the side judges run in, see if they're running in a straight line. It's I believe it. First down. You saw the camera shaking. The stadium is literally shaking. The people are pounding their feet so hard. Third and ten. Over the middle. Complete. First down, Tommy Kane making the reception at the 46-yard line of Denver. Fred, back to the two tight end offense. This is the running set. And it's Ron Heller in motion. Fenner. Up the middle. Fenner. For the 35-yard line. Again, that's Michael Brooks. And we saw that earlier in the game, Todd. Brooks had to save a touchdown. Fenner almost broke that one. And this is what Seattle needs to do. Control the ball. And when you are that kind of club, this is the situation you want to find yourself in. Ball game. First and 10 from the 35. Derek LaBelle. His first carry in the backfield. Zemanski, 94 on the hit. The exception of the box play by Mecklenburg is a screen. A screen might be interesting at this point. Four wide receivers on third and ten. Williams is open. One move, another. He is short of the first down. I know he's short of the first down, but this is actually a big play because what happens now is that we're looking at a 42-yard field goal. Regulation, he has a chance to redeem himself. And he but missed it to the right last time, Fred, and he is on the right hash here. 44 yards for the win. He missed it again.
opportunity, first and ten from their 26. Elway had time. Now jumps it to the middle of the field. Good catch. Clarence K went up to take it away from Terry Wooden. First down, Denver. The play was made by John Elway. What a magician. Jacob Green had him in his grasp for his career 100th sack, and he is able to escape. Right here, you see he has plenty of time, but Jacob Green finally shakes loose. He's got it for the sack, but he avoids it. Puts the ball in his other hand and throws across his body. This could be a situation where he might want to run a drop play. Sewell and Humphrey behind L.A. Complete. Vance Johnson inside Seahawk territory. Tied at 31. As an artist, Vance Johnson may not be Gauguin just yet, but Gauguin never had a year catching like he did. And John Elway goes over the center for a first down. Second and eight from the 44. Watch Steve Sewell coming out of the backfield. It's Dennis Huntley out of the backfield. Down to the 35-yard line of Seattle. That's a great effort by Bobby Humphrey. He was stopped short of the first down. Elway changing the play at the line. Humphrey. Bobby Humphrey. play we just alluded to. They're on the ball and still do it over again on second down. From 25 yards at the angle right, David Treadwell has won the game for Denver. You can certainly be happy for David Treadwell, but your heart certainly has to go out to Norm Johnson. It's been a tough day for them, and your heart has to go out to the Seahawk players as well, who played their hearts out under difficult circumstances and came away with this very painstaking loss. You know that in, in this game, you run the gamut of emotions. Never more apropos was it the old phrase about the thrill of victory and the agony of defeat. In overtime, Denver defeats Seattle 34-31. We'll be right back to Mile High.